everyone. My name is Holly and I work in genealogy and local history at the Columbus Public Library. This video is part of a series about Ancestry 101, genealogy resources you can take home. In this series, I'll be introducing books that I've grouped together to help patrons focus on an area of genealogy interest. These are books that you can place on reserve and have delivered to any branch. So here's today's topic, African American Roots. We have four books here at the main branch. African Names, Reclaim Your Heritage by Samaki. African Names by Julia Stewart. The African American Family's Guide to Tracing Our Roots by Roland Barksdale Hall. And Black Roots by Tony Burroughs. The author of our first book about African names chose to publish under her Swahili nickname, Samaki, given to her after a boating incident when she was 12. It means fish or fish-like. In the preface, we learn that many names are given to an African child at birth, including one real name, and this real name must not be disclosed except to those in whom you place the greatest trust. African leaders believe in the power of names and have changed their names to reflect their heritage and personality to connote power, peace, leadership, or strength. For example, one of Nelson Mandela's names was given to him by his father, Raliaha, a Osa colloquial term meaning troublemaker. He was also known by his clam name, Madiba. The name Nelson was given to him on his first day of school by his teacher. He also went by Tata, his father, Kulu, meaning great one, and Jalibanga, creator or founder of the council. Samaki has a section about phonetics, but to get the click sound, I confess I had to resort to hearing an online pronunciation. The alphabetical arrangement of names in her book is not divided between male or female because boys can be given a girl's name and vice versa like the unisex name Kweli, that means truth in Swahili. An exception would be the name Ada or Ada, a West African name meaning oldest daughter. For each name, there is a meaning and language of origin. Next, we have African Names by Julia Stewart. This book differs from the last one in that the author separates names into male and female categories based on the sound of the name. There is a pronunciation guide and a definition for each. For example, Ada can be pronounced as Ada, Ada, or even Ida. Nigerians use the word for firstborn daughters. In Kiswahili, it means Fi, and it's also the name of a town in Ghana. The over 1,000 names in this book were selected primarily on the aesthetics of how they sound. The author wanted them to be relatively easy to pronounce for English speakers and at the same time be memorable and meaningful. Some names were added because of their historical or cultural significance. In addition to the colonial languages, there are six major language families in Africa that cover thousands of dialects. The Bantu, Semitic, Hamitic, Hottentot, Sudanic, and Bushmen. Our next book is referred to as a self-help guide. It has a pronounced Christian slant and the author calls for taking back what has been lost to reclaim our past to ensure our future. Healing, seeking restoration of families, and returning to the ways of caring and sharing. He is a founder of a chapter of the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society, the AAHGS, and our library patrons can read their national bi-monthly newsletter in genealogy and local history at the Columbus Public Library. The book follows the advice given to every genealogy beginner, which is talking to your oldest relatives first. He rightfully emphasizes the power of story, knowledge, and experience that seniors today have that no history book can truly convey.
One of his 12 keys to health, wealth, and success is know our history. Those that lived in segregated communities, those who fought for civil rights, those who survived insults and death threats and scrimped and saved to go from sharecropping to land and home ownership have incredible stories to tell. The last book we have is Black Roots by Tony Burroughs. It gets a 4.17 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads, and the write-up explains why. Finally, here is the fun, easy-to-use guide that African Americans have been waiting for since Alex Haley published Roots more than 25 years ago. Written by the leading African American professional genealogist in the United States who teaches and lectures widely, Black Roots highlights some of the special problems, solutions, and sources unique to African Americans. This book explains everything you need to get started, including where to search close to home, where to write for records, how to make the best use of libraries and the internet, and how to organize research, analyze historical documents, and write the family history. The author has traced his own family back seven generations. He addresses obstacles African Americans face in family research and includes case histories that illustrate the unique challenges posed to African American researchers, including the legacy of slavery and segregation. He outlines six phases of African American genealogy, including getting oral histories, researching the family to 1870, identifying the last slave owner, researching the owner's background, making a trip to Africa, and researching in Canada and the Caribbean. There are what the author calls traps sprinkled throughout the text, and here are a few of them. Finally, the Digital Library of Georgia announced earlier this year that they have digitized and made available online for free over 130 years of Atlanta area African American funeral programs. The digital collection has over 3,300 individual programs with dates between 1886 and 2019. These programs provide a wealth of genealogical information like photographs, lists of surviving relatives and those that have already passed, places where the person lived and where they are buried. Here is just one example put together by the family of Dovey Madeline Davis. <music>